Hey, well, good morning, Thursday morning. We uh, hauling peas to the seed cleaning plant today. Pretty exciting, I just got Emmy on the bus. So, works out pretty well. Dude wanted me to be there by about nine o'clock. It's five after eight, about a 40 minute drive over there. So, Carl's already running, he's already loaded up. We loaded him up yesterday on the frost. So today, around this, uh, in spring up here, and I'm, I'm curious, I guess, to know for people that aren't from Northern Alberta, how do road bands and stuff work in your areas? You know, especially the guys that are watching down in uh, the States and stuff. I expect, you know, the, the, certainly the ones that get quite a bit of wet snow as well and are all gravel roads, must have some sort of, uh, some sort of a procedure or program in place. So here, road bands are on from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I did phone yesterday and get a permit anyways. And fortunately for us, the only gravel road we go on is this quarter mile. That's basically our own driveway. Nobody else lives on this range road. Uh, and it actually only goes a half a mile and then it turns into a little sheep trail anyways. So, <clears throat> but back to that, we start, we loaded every, oh, it gets windy there. We loaded everything up last night, or sorry, yesterday. Yesterday morning while it was still cold. And right now, as you can see, all of the water puddles are, uh, Got a good, good layer of ice on them, and all of the mud and, and gravel on the roads is very stiff right now, so you can get around no problem. So off we go. Well now we're here, so uh, first thing you guys gotta do, you gotta drive over the scale, get your uh, get your loaded weight, then we'll swing around, we'll drive into the into the elevator, unload, and head back for another load of peas. And usually by the time we get everything hauled in, it's usually a day or so and we'll uh, we'll be able to come back and get the clean product. So 6230. So I can legally haul 63.5, but uh, road band season is here, so I don't push it. You're, uh, nobody wins when you wreck your infrastructure. Um, so folks that are like, well, you just do this, that, the next thing. Yeah, you can, you can do all that stuff. You can not get caught. You can, there's lots of things in the world you can do, but generally following the rules and uh, doing your part to, uh, is, that's the best way, so that's what we do. I'm going to uh, slip around here. This is a little bit tight for super bees, but it kind of was designed, I don't know, I don't know how old this is, 40 some years old maybe, maybe even older. Uh, designed for single axles, tandems, smaller trucks. So we got a loop out on the road here every time. Bit of a pain in the butt because it's a bit of a blind. Blindish corner right here, and now we gotta meet this guy. Lots of oil activity up here. Like, people in this area really shouldn't have much of a reason to complain. There's uh, a tremendous amount of job opportunities, uh, oil companies, regardless of the price of oil, regardless of, uh, you know, world <coughs> situations, world problems, world economies, world anything. This particular area, the peace country of Alberta, is always there's always something going on. The rest of the the rest of the country can be totally dead. The rest of North America can be totally dead. And uh, you come up here and you'll find you'll find somebody digging a hole for a pipeline or drilling a well. This is undeniable, which is good. It served served my dad and I fairly well. My dad spent his whole life. In the patch, I think I spent 10, 10 years or something in it, so did, did us well. Crazy enough though, like the 10 years I spent weren't even in the peace country. It was from, you know, Oklahoma, North Dakota, uh, and then I guess central Alberta, Rocky Mountain, and then a little bit, uh, Rocky Mountain House, 
little bit south. So same with my dad. He spent a lot of time up in Fort Nelson and uh, a lot of time south around Calgary. So although we were born right in the it, right right in the hot spot of the patch, we, we spent very little time here. So. But now I'm going to loop through here and then uh, they got a pit there. We'll get her all dumped out and uh, head home. And now, uh, this is just some of the equipment. So this is similar to our tiny little light foot. It's just, it's a massive version of it. So, got the screens in there. I gotta film this before it gets too loud. Uh, there's another indent over there, a few of them. In here is the uh, coveted color sorter. So, they're, they're pretty fancy machine. The grain falls in a curtain, and when one's a different color, air actually blows it out. And, uh, That's sort of the whole seat cleaning plant in a nutshell, that, that fast. Just a few machines and, and they can do a, a way faster job and a way better job than we can do. dollars for fuel where are you going the next pump I bet you for 700 bucks, I don't even get this Kenworth full. I had about a quarter of a tank. Uh, $700 should get me, what, 300 and, maybe around 300 liters, we'll see. Okay, well, just as I suspected, for $700, I didn't even get her full. So I was at about a quarter of a tank uh, and it cut out on me because I put a $700 limit in there, uh, which is hilarious because the max number they have on their screen is 500 and I was just like, well, let's just see what $700 gets me. And uh, yeah, it gets me like half a tank fuel. So as you can see, 